What's up YouTube, welcome back. I have another hard SQL interview problem for you. This one's part of a new list on Strata Scratch. They're calling it Advanced SQL 25 and it's a list of only hard interview questions and they are pretty hard. So I'm gonna make another playlist and we are going to go over all of the different problems, one video for each. And we're starting off with this one, which is of course mocked as hard and it is pretty hard. So let's get into it together. Now this one's called Marketing Campaign Success Advanced, has the ID 514 if you wanna search for it. I'm also gonna link it down below together with a whole list of problems. It's asked by Active Campaign and Amazon because it relates to customer purchase data and marketing data. Our task is that we have the marketing campaign table which records in-app purchases by users Users making the first in-app purchase enter a marketing campaign where they see call to actions for more purchases. Find how many users made additional purchases due to the campaign's success. The campaign starts one day after the purchase. Users with only one or multiple purchases on the first day do not count, nor do users who later buy only the same products from their first day. Yeah, and we have that one table called marketing campaign. Let's preview that we have a user ID created at, which is the date of the purchase, a product ID, the quantity of how many of that product they purchased and the price of the product, I assume. Yeah, because, yeah, it doesn't really matter here, but it seems to be the price of the product because it's not divisible by five as the price is 29. So let's get over the question again, just to recap. So. This is sort of a marketing campaign. We're interested in in-app purchases by users. This seems to be all in-app data. Users making their first in-app purchase enter a marketing campaign. So after they made their first purchase, a marketing campaign starts and they get more ads, a call to actions in the app probably to make more purchases. All right, our task is to find out how many users actually made additional purchases due to the campaign. So after there was an initial purchase, how many users made another purchase? The campaign starts one day after the purchase. So we're actually interested in purchases at least one day after the initial day. So not on the same day. Yeah, it says users with only one or multiple purchases on the first day do not count, which I think means that it has to be a follow-up purchase on another day. No do users who later buy only the same products from their first day. That's where it gets very interesting. So initially I thought this might be a question of just doing a self-join and seeing which user appears multiple times and the purchase date is later than the initial purchase. So just making that part of the join condition as well as having the same user ID and a different product, but it's unfortunately not that easy. Otherwise, it would be similar to just the retention metrics, which users came back, had another purchase down the road, like appear again in the table. But it says here, users who later buy only the same products from the first day do not qualify for this to be counted. So actually, what this means here is that user ID 10 purchased two products on the first day. Well, actually here it's different. Let's find another one. So there could be several purchases on the same day which appear in the same row, which is a bit annoying to work with. So let's see. Looking for the same one. Yeah, so user 25 had a purchase on the 22nd of January, bought product ID 114 two times and here's the price. Similarly, user ID 25 on the same day bought product 115 two times for that price. And then they came back on other days on the 24th of January and the 27th and bought the same products again on different days. So this one would not count. So how this one would work is that customer purchased two products on their initial day of purchasing things, then got the ads and campaigns, but they actually just bought product 114 and 115, which is part of the list of what they bought on, this, on the first day. So that's how it becomes more complicated. 
you have to check for a list of products on the first day and make sure they bought any product that is not part of that list of products they bought on the first day. And that's how that question is very complicated and yeah, hard to wrap your head around. I guess the sort of approach now is clear because I've gone over the idea of looking for the list of things people bought on the first pro uh, on the first purchase date and then checking whether they bought something else later down the road. So yeah, the elements of that would be finding the first purchase date of a user, the minimum purchase date or the minimum date that shows up here. It could be a minimum and group by, then to get the list, then to have another query to check for whether they pro bought products that are not in that list and on a later date. But that gets very complicated. Then at the end, you'd have to get the count of different user IDs to see how many qualified for that or fulfill that condition. But there's an easy way to do this. I've thought about this one for a long time and I think I found the best solution from one of the submitted solutions. And we're gonna go over this one and I'll walk you through the idea and the shortcuts we can take pretty much. So in order to simplify this a bit, it's not that simple, the solution is a bit complex, but to shorten it and skip a few steps, we can work with a ranking function and pretty much set up a CTE or a temporary table, which we can select from, calling it purchases. And in here, we look at purchases and rank them. And then we can pretty much look up which of those purchases has rank one. And that means it was made on the first date. And with that structure, we can easily check for purchases that haven't been on day one of purchases for that customer and which have a different product ID than the ones on day one. And yeah, for this one, we can select star then define a ranking function using dense rank here, but it doesn't really matter. We're really just interested in the day one rank for our function. But yeah, we're gonna have our window function syntax, petition by, order by. And for this one, we actually have to use both of these keywords, petition by and order by, because we're interested in the list of purchases per user, good petition by user ID. And then we're interested in basically when that purchase happened in order to set the order. We want the first purchase, so we're gonna do, we're gonna use created at in ascending order, which is the default, so I wouldn't have to add it here, but I'm gonna add it for clarity and that will be our rank. I'll just call that R, it's a variable name. And yeah, that should give us the purchase order. Now, in order to work with user ID and product ID in one column, I'm gonna use a concat function, which just concatenates and combines two strings together with a sort of separator we can set, like a dash or comma or an underscore to put things together. And I'm gonna concatenate user ID with, um, let's say, a dash and product ID to get the combination of which user bought which product. Call that user product because it's that combination and we're selecting all that from marketing campaign, our one table we have. Um, yeah, so let's see how that works. On Star Stretch, you can just pretty much mark a section you want to run and then run it. And yeah, so we get the entire table output and then also the rank of the purchase for that user. So here, user ID 10 made three purchases on different dates. 
So we have rank one, two, three, and then the combination of user ID and product ID in one column, which is very neat to work with things. Let's check user 25 because that one has been sort of specific in not fulfilling the condition. So here we have rank one for both of the purchases made on the first day, which is what we want. And then we can pretty much check for these purchases and see whether the follow-up purchases are different. So here that new column that we established, the combination of user ID and product ID called user product. Here, this one has the same value as that column value for the initial purchase because it's just user ID and product. So we are able to identify when a user purchases the same product in one column. Same happens here for 25, dash 115, user ID 25, purchase product ID 115, again, which they also did on the first day. So we are going to be able to check for whether they purchased a new product, whether that user purchased a new product, and whether that is a different day from the first day. It will always have a higher rank than one if it's a higher date because here we see the case of having the same date, the initial date, 22nd of January. If it's the same date, they will all have rank one. Otherwise, if it's a higher date, it's gonna be rank two, three, or so on. Yeah, so dense rank makes it two. Otherwise, it would skip to three, but we're really interested in checking whether it's different from one, and we're able to do so. So now what we want to do to get to our solution is pretty much just make that comparison. So we're going to select the count of distinct user IDs, pretty much count how many user IDs we have for which we can say it's true that they purchased a different product on a different day, on a later date. And we're going to check for that by selecting from this table up here Purchases P, which we defined here, which is what we're working with here. And yeah, we're going to just check for these conditions. So the rank should be higher than one. It should be, they should have a purchase, which was not on the first day of purchases. So basically a follow-up purchase on another day. And the product user this new column combination, we just checked here. So 25, 40, 114, 25, 115. It shouldn't be in the list of purchases on day one. So basically we check for each of these new ones and check whether it's in the list of values for where the rank is one. So we're gonna exactly spell that out. So this value should not be in and then we can have another small select statement in select product ID, uh, user product, this combination from purchases where R equals one. So this will just be this table, this list, only with like first day purchases and that's what we're comparing against so yeah this will be the solution actually we're gonna count for how many users it is true that they made a purchase on a follow-up date with a product that hasn't been purchased on the first date and this setup makes us able to code this up pretty shortly and quickly i just have a small syntax area p dot product user it's actually use a product, right? Yeah. And that does the trick. If you weren't able to do that, you would have to go through that entire setup I talked about in terms of getting the minimum purchase date, then the list of things. But here we sort of, we're sort of able to combine things quite quickly because of, the, of that rank function and the concatenation. I'm going to head on over to the discussion section where this submission was actually added by Victor Edens257. And 
yeah, I think it's a good solution. I think otherwise the official solution is much longer and you'll have to sort of set up this entire structure, check for things. I think this is an elegant solution, but it's a very hard problem to wrap your head around. I think the setup with that, with purchases being in separate rows, I don't think it's ideal. Um, yeah, might be realistic, but I think as a question, it doesn't really, it doesn't really test the right things for me, I, I'd say. So I'd give this a download, but some of the hard questions, they really are edge cases there, check for specific things. You might have to use specific functions like concat in combination with a rank, which makes them hard. So these are not the most common scenarios which are often asked in an interview, but they are very good to sort of test your skills, think about how to divide things into smaller problems. So I, th I still think they're very good exercises to work around. And this one has been especially hard, even though it's the first one on the list. So yeah, after that, after going through that, hopefully the rest will be smooth sailing and I'll see you for the next one. I'm going to spin up a playlist for all of the videos and slowly fill them up one by one. I'll also link to this specific question on Strata Scratch so you can give it a try. Maybe try out some of the different ways of solving it because there are a couple different ones. And I'll also link to that 20 uh, advanced SQL 25 filter for you to check out the other ones and maybe try them before the new videos come out. And yeah, that'll be it. I'll link to Strata Scratch. Consider getting a membership to get access to all of the different questions and check out the solutions tabs and discussions because it's very helpful to see what other people have done to solve things. And apart from that, I'll still see you in another video to, to discuss these together. And yeah, looking forward to it. See you.